Welcome to The Thinking Tree, a podcast to help believers renew their minds and reform their hearts. I'm Adam Sanchez. And I'm Jeff No. And today we are taking on navigating conflicts within the family. All right, we're back with my lovely wife and part of my family. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, See how I did that? That was good. <laughs> Jess, good to have you again. Okay, so we are here discussing the series we've been continuing in on navigating conflicts. Now we're talking about family. So last time we talked about marriage, the first close relationship uh, that starts a family. Now it's family in general. And so we have a lot in view here, but here's the question first. How can Christians pursue reconciliation with varying relationships in the family? Mm. Because there are a lot of different ones. So you could have, you know, the, this like uh, in-law dynamic, you have all these things, but it, it's hard when you're dealing with family. Mm. There are expectations for how you relate to certain people. Mm -hmm. uh, there's certain uh, authority relationships, even when you deal with parents and children or aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews, uh, siblings are a whole nother ball game. Uh, and how you grew up even with all kinds of dynamics of, you know, teasing and picking on each other and all those, like it gets really messy mm -hmm. when we're dealing with family. And then you throw in that one curveball of, and are they a believer? Mm -hmm. Are they a professing believer? And you know, what kind of church do they go to? And what kind of <laughs> conflict reconciliation <laughs> does that church promote? I mean, it is just, it's just going to be messy. And then, and then when you think through all that, you got to show up to the next holiday and you still yes. got to, you still got to say hi and give hugs. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. So it doesn't, <laughs> even though it's not marriage, it's still, it's a difficult dynamic when there's conflict within the family. And if you're listening to this and you say, I have no idea what you're talking about, just pause this episode and praise the Lord <laughs> and just say, God, thank you so much <laughs> that I don't have this right now. And, and that's a grace. So we're talking about all these things that happen within, within a family dynamic. What are some of the things that you guys have seen? In, in family conflicts, because now we're extending beyond the marriage relationship. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, uh, one thing that we see a lot in our premarital counseling and mm -hmm. our, our postmarital counseling <laughs> as well, because it on, it's ongoing, is that yeah. you mentioned it, in-law. Yeah. Oh my, in-law in relationships. Dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, off, even in the Christian world, because Christians mm -hmm. are yes. are weird sometimes, yes. and, and we come from homes that have a lot of preferences mm -hmm. that are taught not as preferences, but taught as this is the only way to do things. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so you've got two young people, oftentimes in their early twenties, still figuring life out, yep. still in mm -hmm. call it the stupid years. Uh, no, I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> out loud, you did. I know, but you know they they say until until someone's about twenty five, yeah. they're still not. They really just haven't figured out life just yet. But but I'm not I'm not. I'm not saying you shouldn't get married young, but if you come in from at a young age, most of the time, especially if you get married straight out of college, what what are the patterns you've learned? They mm -hmm. come out straight out of your mm -hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. uh, Tanny and I, we were 27, 28 when we got married. So we had five, six years, oh, actually more than that in college, but mm -hmm. away from our parents. Yeah, so living, we, on, mm -hmm. living on your own, so to speak. Yeah, yeah we developed our own mm -hmm. habits, which also some need to be broken. Lead to yeah. some conflict yeah. there, right. sure. Yeah. Yeah. But at least, at least we were sort of growing up in that sense. But you come, you come into this marriage and you bring all of that baggage from family. Some of it's good. A lot of it's not, mm -hmm. and you've got these things, and now you're tossing that into a household and trying to figure things out, and mm -hmm. a lot of stuff comes up. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that comes up is, well, my mom never did it that way, <laughs> <laughs> right? Or that's not the way it's supposed to be done because I saw my dad do this. So, yeah. it, and then there's the actual person, and then you, and then you have to get to know your in-laws as well. Mm -hmm. And guess what? In-laws have strong opinions about their baby girl mm -hmm. or their baby boy, yeah, yeah, and what they thought their life would be. Exactly, yeah. and and maybe maybe you don't fit their bill, mm -hmm. right? Or your spouse doesn't fit the bill that they were looking for, and they have strong opinions about the way where you should live and what you, what house you should buy. Or yeah, all these how different things. How you raise things. your kids? How you raise your kids? <laughs> what kids. schools? Yeah. Exactly. So it's a very tough road to navigate. So we we always talk in Heartwood about the the Genesis two twenty four principle mm. yeah. that you've got to you've got to you've got to break away from that allegiance to your parents yeah. and become one flesh. And that's mm -hmm. right and good for the it's Lord. A good thing, right? And you become the primary. It's we talk about it's it's you against the world now. Mm. Not that we're setting up adversarial relationships right, against right. our parents, but we're saying you guys are one flesh. So now you need to draw really good boundaries mm -hmm. with your in-laws and your own parents mm -hmm. to say, uh, we want to welcome in all that is healthy 
to this relationship. But if it's not, we got to draw healthy boundaries. So working through all that stuff, still got to find ways to honor your parents. That's biblical as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and how do you then communicate through that with your with your parents? We just did this a couple nights ago at, at Hartwood. This, mm. Okay, so, so there's things that we think are unhealthy that are coming at us from our in-laws or from our parents. How do we communicate right. well with them right. to say, look, I'm now married to this person and, and it's our decision. Yeah. We mm-hmm. love you. We appreciate your feedback. Yep. It's our decision. So those are, those are man. Those are tough ones Difficult. to fight as, yeah. a, as a young person. So we just, some... we just say, get, get discipleship, get counseling. <laughs> you know, ser- no, seriously, because those Sometimes, things can blow yeah. up a marriage. Yeah. So come, come talk to an older couple who can give you some wisdom before you just wade into those waters. Right. And they'll just start swinging yeah, at those things exactly. for sure. What are some other ones you've seen, Jess? Yeah, I mean, my most immediate context is my children mm. um, outside of my marriage, which we talked about last time. <laughs> and the dishes. And the yeah, dishes. Yeah, we talked about that. Um, but yeah, it's these... Thanks, Jess. These, these <laughs> <laughs> stack, stack. <laughs> Never. Um, just kidding. Uh, it's these two <laughs> small sinners that I've been entrusted with and that I am Your kids? around all the time. I know um, you'd never believe it if uh, you saw them. Oh, Perfect. My word. Anyway, um, so that's that's the sinful dynamic there. And and what it is is they're little sinners who are following their sinful hearts and, and acting upon those. Um, and then I have a sinful heart too. So there's that all that interaction um, and... That's my primary, that's my, my life, my consumed with that. But there's other too, other family dynamics also. Um, there's the in-law aspect and then there's siblings and cousins and yeah. you can mm-hmm. come from some big families and sometimes big families have feuds where people aren't don't talk to each other yeah. for 10, 20 years. You could marry into something like that. That could be your yeah. family. Um, and, then, and then, yeah, that difficult aspect that Adam even brought up is what if they're unbelievers? Mm. Um, and what if they claim to be a believer? but they're not acting like one, right? right? What if right. it's some very grievous, obvious sin um, that they're living in and that they, they want you to embrace? Um, and what if they are close that you see them all the time? And what if they're far away and you never see them? So it's a conflict, but you're right. like, well, it's just kind of like, I don't have to, I can pretend it doesn't exist for most of my life, yeah. but then there are moments where I can't. Um, yeah, so it's varied. As you opened it up, I was like, First thing we need to tell everybody is what Jeff just said. Please get some counsel because yeah. this <laughs> podcast is going to cover things so generally. Yeah. Yeah. But for your very specific uh, circumstance that you are thinking about, listener, reach out to somebody and ask for yeah. some wisdom in terms of the specifics because there's just a lot, a lot of variables. Yeah. Well, I'll throw a really big wrench and in, you know into all the ones you guys mentioned. Those are all really good. I'm just going to make it more complicated. Oh, good. Say, and what about when you have a broken or a blended family? Uh, oh, yeah. So now you yeah, take yeah, yeah. all those same things, but now you make it even Maybe double. testier, you know, even in more intense mm-hmm. in, in nature because now you have other lines drawn beyond that. Yep. So it's almost even like just double or exponential in terms of the chaos that can ensue mm-hmm. uh, from mm-hmm. from those types of relationships where you say, you know, you have a blended family and now it's, well, that's my real brother and that's not my real sister. And so it, it can get really, really difficult. Uh, and so it's painful. So yes, all that to say yeah. is a lot of these are very nuanced and we're dealing with family conflict. What we want to do though is provide some just very basic practical encouragements when we're thinking about navigating these family conflict. So it's not meant to be exhaustive and to cover every type. We're just setting the stage for how can we begin to think about these? Even if you notice one, it's maybe in your family, but maybe you're not directly involved in it. Maybe it's not you at the center of it, but you're kind of watching it from afar. You know, you know enough about it because mm. the gossip that shouldn't be happening is happening. And you, you hear these details. How do you begin to think about it? And so we want to be able to at least take stock of what is at least what's going on and how we can begin to think biblically, put it through mm. that biblical grid, that biblical yeah. worldview uh, to understand it better, to understand ourselves better, and then how we could respond in a way that glorifies God. So the, one of the first things I would say is you're navigating family conflict, consider the relationship. Right. And, and what I mean by that is consider the nature of the relationship. You know, mm-hmm. Jess, you mentioned, you know, our kids and yes, they're sinners, but they're dearly loved sinners, right? Is what we always say too. <laughs> we really love them. And so the nature of the relationship is parent to child. Right. That's a unique relationship. There is an authority that our kids have to answer to. And th- so that uh, there's a lot of nuance to that. But like one thing I'd point out is as parents, even though we have the authority, we don't want to wield that authority mm. in an unloving and uncaring way. So one of the things we're mindful of is even though we're the authority, we want to not exasperate 
our children, not be right. overbearing to them in an unhelpful way. So we consider the relationship, even right. though we know they're responsible to answer to us. If you think about, you, Jeff, you mentioned some of these, like with the in-laws, you mentioned, yeah, they're an in-law, and so they're a parent, yet by the nature of getting married, you're no longer submitting to them in the same way. Correct. Necessarily. Right. And so we have to consider the relationship. Right. If we don't think about that rightly, and you, you have maybe a newlywed couple who's still submitting to one of the parents, and that could be really tough. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, right? We're not encouraging It's that. hard though, because we've been told our whole lives I to know, do that. And now stop all of a sudden. Yeah. That's hard. So considering the relationship, it's huge. I know we could talk more about this. You're free to, but what are some other principles that you're seeing at play here? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, it, it comes back to what you just said. It's all, in all of these things, it's remembering biblical principles. Can mm-hmm. I just say the, the Bible is our guidebook in all these things. Amen. Amen. So mm-hmm. it's not like we're like, oh, we need to find a whole different source or outside book. The Bible tells us a lot about these things. And so uh, again, with the in-law situation, you know, and, and yeah, those things can come up where, where either, you know, the girl is still, you know, relying on mom or the guy's still talking to dad and they're not, they're not allowing, they're actually allowing those relationships to take precedence over the marriage mm-hmm. and that's going to create conflict. But, but okay, so how do we take a, take a deep breath, step back, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, sit down, communicate well yeah. with my spouse. Okay, here's, it, and, and I'll call on the guys. Again, this is part of your role as, as the head yeah. of, of the relationship is to say, we're going to sit down, we're going to talk through this. Okay, mm-hmm. all right, here's, here's the situation with our in-laws. Uh, we know we're one flesh, Genesis two twenty four. <laughs> I know that I'm I'm supposed to lead in this, and so let's let's fulfill our roles well. God's given us roles in this marriage. Let's fulfill those well. How do we now approach your mom or your father, whatever it might be? How do we do that with love? Yeah, and with grace, remembering mm-hmm. where they're coming from. That, mm-hmm. and I know this now on the grandparent side, right? <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard to not say things. It's hard to stay yeah, out of it. So just watch. Not every parents able to do that, right? So yeah. so how do we communicate well, honor our parents in that process, but also take a firm stand to remind them that we have, is the right term, left and cleft? Is that the right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. I've never that, heard that, that used before. Well, yeah. You know, that's, that's what we are. Mom, yeah. mom we're, we are one flesh now. Yeah. We love you. We want to honor you, but this is our call. Mm-hmm. Right. And so things between us have to change. How do we do that well? But the Bible tells us, and, and if it creates conflict, then we go back to our principles of Amen. How, do we, mm-hmm. how do we deal with that? Yep. How do we mm-hmm. bring in the, the four Gs? And yep. how do we you know, confess our part? If, mm-hmm. if we've been harsh or right. whatever, we confess that and we pursue reconciliation. So the Bible tells yeah. us how to do these things, mm-hmm. but it's hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have to actually read the Bible, though. That's Jeff, true too. To know yeah. that, know yeah. what it actually yeah. says. Yeah. Um, I think that my uh, great encouragement is just what always coming back. What does the Bible actually say? Um, what is your job? <laughs> what is your business in regards to this relationship? Um, and in terms of um, uh, my children, uh, who I see all the time, what is my my instruction from the Lord? Right, that I'm to bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Um, so there's multiple facets to that. Um, and so how do I, how do I handle that when they sin against me and when I sin against them? And, um, the four G's are helpful. I think the first in terms of like thinking that God is in control, right? He, he authored this child. I didn't, he Mm. knew them before they were born and he Mm. knows the day of their death and he knows their strengths and weaknesses and I'm learning them. He knows, he knows Mm -hmm. it already. Um, So I can rest in the sovereignty that he has equipped me to be able to do the job he's called me to do with his Mm -hmm. child. Um, And then in terms of the, get the log out of my own eye and gently confront the children. And this is, this is what I I have a difficulty. I remind myself often back to um, one of the seven A's, the avoid if, and, or, but, because I want to do that one a lot. Um, When I sin against my children, I'm not usually the instigator of just sinning against my children. It's usually in response to them sinning against me. Right, (laughs) right, right. right. Um, And that's kind of, you know me, that's my personality. Don't start no stuff, won't be no stuff. But, (laughs) If someone someone throws down, like I'm there to fight. So that's, and that's my sin nature there, right? And so when when I'm confronting them, if they sin and then I sin, I'm very tempted to say, I'm sorry that I yelled, but you didn't obey, right? right? Um, And I catch myself in that oftentimes. Mm. And the Lord is so gracious because the reality is when I just own my part, 
in the sin. They disobeyed, they were disrespectful, whatever, the, whatever it was. If I sin against them and I come to them and I say, you know what, I am so sorry for how I sinned against you. I know that that was wrong and I should be practicing self-control. God has given me the power to do that. I didn't do that. I know that I hurt you, um, that I scared you, that I, whatever it was, yeah. I'm, I, I am, I'm sorry. I love you dearly. Will you forgive me? Um, number one, they always forgive yeah. super quick. Um, and then usually I don't even have to say what they did because they will respond with, and I'm sorry, mommy, I didn't obey the first time I was told. They will, they will bring it up themselves. So there is a gentle um, response that the Lord is so gracious to bring about in that. Um, and I have practiced, I have my children practice a form, a watered down form when they uh, confess, especially to one another. So we've got the sibling rivalry, right? Back and forth, mm-hmm. back and forth. And so whenever they are, are uh, confessing to one another, they are to say what they, they name what they did wrong. Mm-hmm. They say what they should have done or what they will do in the future. And then they say, I love you. And then they say, will you forgive me? Mm. And even that between the two of them often just water on the flame of whatever it was that they can acknowledge what they did. They know what they should have done. They reaffirm the relationship. I love you. And will you forgive me? Um, And so then they are still doing that with me too. And I love it because it was like just last week that Zion goes, um, Mommy, you don't even have to say you forgive me. I know, I know you're going to. I know that you already have forgiven Aww. me because we, you know, because we practice it a lot. But we practice it a yeah. lot because we're sinners. Because it happens. <laughs> it happens so frequently, and there can be a weariness in like, oh, we're doing this again. Um, and so that's the long, the long suffering, right? If we've been put the first G and the last one, we're looking at God's glory, and we're going and being reconciled, which is a long process. Yeah. Where we're like, okay, Lord, help me not to grow weary in doing good. Please m- m- bring fruit from this. But the listener should know, should hear in that, that that principle is central to every aspect of conflict. Yeah. Yeah. Humility changes the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, it tills the soil yep. that allows for a softer reaction. Yeah. So if if you just want to fight, then then don't be humble. You just yeah. want to fight, yeah. and then go fight and be more miserable. If you actually want to solve the problem and come to a place of peace, yeah. then... then um, we, so we used to joke, whoever's the more mature one should come first. It's almost a competition. <laughs> right. If you're more mature on the Lord, gonna die you come quick, first with quicker, humility yeah. and apologize. Uh, and then it's, it's, a, it's a battle to see who's more humble, right? <laughs> Which is hilarious, right? But we used to say that like, okay, you guys could both go to your corners and act like you know, sure. immature babies or one of you can show maturity and come first with humility and it will change the game. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. Yeah, I think about family drama. I, I, all those principles are so important. Um, I think about being specific about what actually happened. Yeah. I, I think because emotions flare up. I mean, we think especially with our kids, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, but I felt this so strongly, you know, the shaking rage we talk about with our oh, son. <laughs> uh, they feel things so intensely, almost like they can't even talk because it's, it's bubbling up inside of them. And that's with our kids. But that can also happen with adults, to yeah. like adults and family relationships as well. And we get more worked up over how we feel about something than over what it actually was. Yeah. And so I would say it is helpful when we're thinking about family conflict even uh, to, to be specific. Mm. What, what was it? What actually caused it? You mentioned earlier with a church conflict. I can't remember if it was, if it was, was it you, Jess, I was talking about? church conflict we mentioned this a couple episodes ago but you know it's two guys you know they fought and all this and then at the end of it maybe it was you jeff who brought it up no one even remembers what they were arguing over <laughs> yeah it was just why well, i knew that you know he was on this side and he was on this side and i landed over here right well, what was it over uh, i don't know that's that's too bad it's crazy <laughs> you know because right. it really should have been specific uh, if we're going to actually deal with it. Because when it is specific, then we can take the posture uh, to actually deal with it in humility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If we don't even know what it is, then we're just dealing with our emotions. We're not even <laughs> dealing with a transgression. We're not dealing right. with sin. And that's okay if it's not sin. Right. It's it's good to be specific so we could say, oh, you know what? That wasn't sin. It's a misunderstanding or miscommunication, or I don't know that yet, but it's not sin. Right. That's a great place to be right. when you find out, oh, I'm actually, I'm upset because I didn't like it but it may not actually be sin. Mm. Right. We, we can solve a lot of things. But, <laughs> but in order to do that, we have to actually look closer at feelings. <laughs> we don't want to yeah. do, some of us don't want to do that. 
And then some of us want to focus only on the feelings because that's the world's yeah. going to say, I'm going to especially with kids, validate their feelings. I'm like, okay, there's a difference between validating and acknowledge. I can acknowledge that my son feels angry. His fists right. are balled up. I know that mm-hmm. he feels angry right now. And I right. can say, hey, you look like you <laughs> feel a little bit angry. But to validate and say like, that's okay, that's, okay, right? that's yeah. totally okay. <laughs> yeah. And rather than saying, I see that you're feeling that, tell me why you're feeling that. And is the reason why a true reason? Does mm-hmm. that line up with what's true in God's word? Or is it not? Are we believing a lie? Are we fighting for our own kingdom right now? Like mm-hmm. to sift, we have to actually sift through those. And yeah. Part of us don't want to deal with feelings at all and the other part want to only talk about the feelings. Yeah. You know, there's one thought I'll give here and then maybe we'll close with some practical uh, encouragements here, but um, it's this idea that we should not hold the transgressions of others against them more than God does. Hmm. And, and I say that specifically in the context of parents for sure. Yeah. Parent, and parents of young kids particularly, you know, sometimes we can be overly harsh, over have unrealistic expectations for our kids where we're holding their sins, their transgressions against them even more than God would Mm. uh, when they're repentant and when they turn and even when they just plainly ask for forgiveness or say that they're sorry, even if they don't fully understand what all those things are with the seven A's and everything, but they're at least in the posture of wanting to be reconciled and not wanting to be at odds. And so we can create these big chasms. You know, Jeff, you were in a sermon. I know this is recorded and by the time it'll it'll air is going to be some time, but in Psalm 51, and you were talking about the posture Mm -hmm. of forgiveness for from God mm. and that the believer can often have this misunderstanding that God is so far away from the believer because of his holiness and because of the sin stain. And, and there's a misunderstanding of the closeness actually that should mm. be there. Amen. And then it hurts and it causes more pain and more heartache and uh, more difficulty even to be able to walk forward. And so we want to make sure too, and we're, when we're with others, whether it's a child of ours or another family member of ours, that we're not dealing with them and their sin or transgression in a way that is inconsistent with how God would deal with them. Mm. We, we want to yeah. model that love and that care that God gives. That's good. Yeah. So as we wrap up here, what are some maybe one or two encouragements you would wrap up with here when it comes to navigating family conflicts, dealing with some of the nuances of in-laws and uh, even potential family rifts, people picking sides? You know, What are a couple closing thoughts you would give? Um. As much as it depends on you, live at, live at peace with all men, right? Remember, one thing that, that's always struck me um, is, I know I'm a pastor, I get that. But yes, it's, you this, are. Yeah, but this is, for all, <laughs> this is all for all Christians. How I interact in all of my relationships reflects Christ. Yeah. 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 I'm an ambassador. Yeah. Amen. Um, and my testimony is at stake. Mm-hmm. So I can't just write people off. I can't yeah. just say, well, yeah, yeah forget that person. And that's Christ wouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. I, I can't yeah. do that. I, I represent him. So I, I, and I, I think that's for all of us as believers mm-hmm. is yeah. to remember in all these relationships from parenting your kids, right? right? right. To dealing with your in-laws, whatever it might be, to, to family, extended family members who you really struggle with. They're either mm-hmm. unbelievers or yeah. they're hypocrites or, sure. or they're just mean yeah. and nasty. Yeah. Each, the way you relate to all those different people, it's unique, mm-hmm. right? right? You're gonna go at it in different ways but in all of them, you represent Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I just think Second Corinthians 5, 9, therefore we have this as our amb- ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to him. Mm-hmm. That my ambition of life would be to be pleasing to the Lord. And for me, it helps to um, imagine myself standing before the throne of God mm. in a moment. Am I in how, where I'm standing and how I'm making my stand right now? <laughs> Could I stand before the throne yeah. and say that? I'm justified here. I'm faithful here that I've done everything that I've been called to here in this moment. Um, And that can be tricky because sometimes I'm like, should I say something or should I not say something? (laughs) And if I stand before the throne, am I going to be more clean conscience if I said something? Right. Or if I did not say something, yeah, you those, know that those can be hard for me. That yeah. isn't uh, that yeah. is something that I often um, come with. But I want I want to please I want to please the Lord, and so I'm going to overlook. If I can, I'm going to confront where sin is sin um, and I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit to convict because that's not my business. Good, right. And I'm trying to be faithful. Amen. That's good. Nothing to add on my end. I love all those that's things. That's good. That's great. Well, friends, we pray this episode of The Thinking Tree has helped you to renew your minds and reform your hearts. We'll see you next time. <laughs>